The U.S. Civil War did not start as a war to end slavery. President Lincoln just wanted to keep the country together. By 1862, however, Lincoln's thinking had changed. He said, Slavery must die that the nation might live. The Emancipation Proclamation Some of Lincoln's advisors said ending slavery would divide the North and unite the South. They were right. But Lincoln was determined. On January 1, 1863, he issued a proclamation, or official announcement. It called for the emancipation, or setting free, of enslaved African Americans. Lincoln's Emancipation Proclamation freed enslaved African Americans in states at war with the Union. The proclamation did not end slavery in the border states that stayed loyal to the Union. These were Delaware, Kentucky, Maryland, Missouri, and West Virginia. It freed enslaved African Americans in the Confederacy, but only those areas controlled by the Union benefited. As a result, most African Americans remained enslaved. When the Civil War ended, General Gordon Granger was sent to the state of Texas. On June 19, 1865, he read to the people of Galveston, The people of Texas are informed that all slaves are free. African Americans in Texas celebrated this day as their day of freedom. The tradition of celebrating on this day is known as Juneteenth. A Diverse Army African-American abolitionist Frederick Douglass supported Lincoln and encouraged other African-Americans to help the Union. Large numbers of them responded by joining the Union Army. By the end of the war, about 179,000 African-American men had served as soldiers in the Union Army. Many recent immigrants also enlisted. Many German, Irish, British, and Canadian soldiers joined in the fight. About 20,000 American Indians served in either the Confederate or Union armies. General Eli S. Parker, a Seneca, wrote the surrender document that General Robert E. Lee signed at the end of the war. Parker later told how, during the surrender, Lee said to him, I'm glad to see a real American here. Parker replied to the general, We are all Americans. Union Army A Soldier's Life The average age of a Civil War soldier was 25. However, boys as young as 12 went into battle as drummer boys. For young soldiers and old, life on the Civil War battlefields was dirty, dangerous, and difficult. Quest Connections There were songs written about boredom, marching, and even food. Highlight two or three words or phrases that you might use in your song. Battles were horrible, but long, boring waits between battles were hard, too. Most battles were in the South, where summers were very hot. Soldiers almost always traveled on foot and might march up to 25 miles a day. The supplies in their backpacks weighed as much as 50 pounds. Marching proved even more difficult for Confederate soldiers. The Union blockade kept supplies from reaching the Southerners, so soldiers could not replace worn-out shoes. They often marched and fought in bare feet. Food was a problem, too. It was rarely fresh. The Army supplied beef and pork. Both were preserved so they did not spoil. Fresh pork had been salted to become salt pork. Beef was pickled or preserved in water and spices. In addition, the troops had beans and biscuits. These biscuits were tough flour and water biscuits called hardtack. To survive, troops raided local farms to steal fresh fruits and vegetables. 1. Reading Check For most soldiers, life was very different in the Army. Turn and talk with a partner to discuss what you would have found to be the most difficult part of being a soldier during the Civil War. Sick and Wounded in the mid-1800s, the idea that germs cause disease was a new and untested theory. Most doctors had not heard of it. Many doctors never washed their hands or medical instruments. 
A wounded soldier who made it to a hospital might be put in a bed in which someone had just died of fever, without the sheets being changed. Infections were common and disease spread quickly. There were few medicines and no antibiotics. Twice as many soldiers died of disease as died of gunshot wounds. Caring for the Soldiers At this time, there were almost no nursing schools in the United States. Most nurses learned as they worked. One nurse described a field hospital this way. Primary source. Just across the lawn, there were some of the worst cases, and the sight and sounds we have to encounter daily are most distressing. I am mightily afraid we shall have some sort of infectious fever here, for it is impossible to keep the place clean and there is a bad smell everywhere. Clara Barton was the most famous of the volunteer nurses. She went out to where the soldiers were. Barton said her place was anywhere between the bullet and the battlefield. At the Battle of Antietam, as the cannons boomed, she held the operating table steady for the surgeon. She became known as the Angel of the Battlefield. After the war in 1881, she founded the American Red Cross. Hundreds of women helped on both sides. Juliet Opie Hopkins from Alabama cared for Confederate soldiers. In 1861, she sold all her property and gave the money to the Confederacy to establish hospitals. Hopkins was shot twice while rescuing wounded men on the battlefield. 2. Reading Check Identify two things you might do to help nurse soldiers. On the home front. Most women did not work on the battlefield. They stayed home and took care of their families. They filled the jobs that had been held by men. They ran stores and planted crops. Wordwise. Compound words. Some words are made up of two words you may already know, such as bookshelf or snowstorm. If you are not sure of the meaning of the word, think about the two words that make up the word. Think about the meaning of battle and field to help you understand the meaning of battlefield. Women in the South often had to move their families and belongings as homes and towns were destroyed. They also had to deal with shortages of supplies caused by the North's blockade. Prices increased sharply. The average Southern family's monthly food bill rose from $6.65 just before the war to $68 by 1863. Almost no one could afford food. In April of that year, hundreds of women in Richmond, Virginia, rioted to protest the rise in prices. Women in other southern cities rioted over the price of bread, too. When they could, women hid their livestock as the armies came through. Hungry soldiers would kill and eat all the chickens and pigs. Of course, the army would take any other food they could find, too. Often after an army had passed through, the civilians were left starving. This was the case when the Union Army marched through the South. Women also hid possessions from the enemy soldiers. These included items that had been in their families for generations. People in the North read about the war. Many sent husbands or sons to fight. In the South, families struggled with the direct effects of the war's destruction. 3. Reading Check Identify three things you would take with you if you had to escape before an enemy army came. Women in Wartime Women on both sides contributed to the war effort. In addition to being nurses on the battlefield or keeping farms and family businesses running, they sewed clothing and made bandages. They sold personal possessions to raise money and sent food to the armies. Some women traveled with their soldier husbands and sons, cooking for them, nursing them, and helping them. A few women even became soldiers. Frances Clallan, for example, disguised herself as a man so she could fight in the Union Army. Sojourner Truth, a former enslaved African-American, 
had worked for abolition before the war and would work for women's rights after the war. During the war, she gathered supplies for African American regiments. A popular speaker, she often told stories of her life as an enslaved African American. Primary Source I have borne thirteen children and seen most all sold off to slavery, and when I cried out with my mother's grief, none but Jesus heard me. Sojourner Truth Some women became spies. Documents and even weapons could be hidden under the large hoop skirts they wore. Belle Boyd, nicknamed La Belle Rebelle, was one of the most famous female Confederate spies. Union soldiers arrested her six times, but she kept spying for the Confederates. After one arrest, Boyd communicated to a Confederate by hiding messages inside rubber balls and throwing them between the bars of her cell windows. Bringing the War Home New technology changed the way the war was fought, but it also changed the way people at home experienced the war. People still got news from the battlefield through the old technology of soldiers' letters and newspapers. For the first time, people back home also got to see something of what the soldiers were living through. A new technology, photography, made this possible. The Civil War was the first war to be taken home in images. Matthew Brady thought it was important to photograph the war. People still learn from Brady's photographs showing the details of war. He took pictures of soldiers posing, resting, and cooking. Brady and other photographers also took photos of field hospitals, weapons, and dead bodies on the battlefield. Their photos appeared in newspapers and special exhibits. 4. Reading Check Describe what caption you would write if you were the photographer of this photograph. Camera technology was not well developed at the time. Cameras were large and heavy. All the preparation and developing had to be done in the dark, so the photographers used a darkroom wagon. Photographs of the time were taken on specially treated glass plates. The glass plates had to be handled carefully as the wagon bumped through the countryside and across battlefields. Some people claim that as a result of all the letters home and all the photographs, civilians knew more about the Civil War than about any war before.